Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to talk about the IP multimedia subsystem, which is a quite familiar term among at least the telecom fraternity. And in brief, if I can define the, what the IP multimedia subsystem, which is in short sometimes called or many times called as IMS also, is basically a framework, an architecture, uh, and you know, a framework, when I mean to say it's a framework, it's much more than a technology, meaning that you know, it comprises of many technologies and uh, it's basically meant for running those high-end multimedia services over the common cost-effective and the reliable IP transport and also around the nuances of the IP technology. So, you know, there, is, there has always been a big gap between the way we communicate and the way we would like to communicate. You know, now users are looking towards a device convergence, meaning that no matter whether I am using a PC, mobile phone, or a television, I should have the same set of you know services, applications running across the devices seamlessly at any time at, for the convenience of my communication fashion, and with of course the mobility in place. I want you know my device to be reached at the single identity inside the network, and all these multimedia services has to be available with the definite quality of services instead of you know having on the best effort basis like you see in case of the internet world. And last but not least is that no matter whether my devices are lost at any place, I should be able to retrieve, update and you know, view my contacts through the network based active address book. So this is what the visibility vision that the users want with respect to their communication requirement. And to make all these things possible, a user centric communication, we have the IMS in place to turn this uh, dream of users into a reality. Of course all the things what I am speaking here could be viewed from the prism of you know, many uh, perspective, but whatever I have captured here is from the uh, prism of the telecom means command forces that how they can you know leverage upon the capabilities of the IMS. So at the heart of the IMS, you have the converged IMS core, which is you know access agnostic, which is based on the standardized architecture and the standardized interfaces. On the top of that, you have the standardized IMS applications connecting to this common core with the standardized interfaces and. On the top of that, you can build a plethora or the gamut of the services by connecting or by synergizing the existing standard application. And just to name some, these are some of the standardized applications standardized by the standardization bodies. And these are some of the applications which are, you know, connected on the top of that. And, you know, it's not simply means this is only the set of the services you can adjust just for the, you know, uh, simplification I have quoted here some, but you can, you know, blend any kind of services at any time. In fact, you know, the one application which is an application in itself can become enabler to the another application. Like example, you can, you know, combine the presence, messaging, location-based services with the multimedia telephony and you can, you know, control and manage your fleet. And that's what the power of IMS is. And the best thing about this ecosystem is that, you know, it's relying on the standardized architecture, means it's fully interoperable, it's defined by the standards and interfaces. And at the heart, means just to, you know, reinforce that, to enable this kind of, you know, mega structure, the foundation stone is laid by the common IMS core. This is just a small use case of the unified communication experience in which, you know, I just want to show here is that in the current communication uh, networks, what we have is the fragmented user experience for the want of adding a particular media or application, you have to disrupt the existing session. In case of the IMS-based unified communication services, you have to first select the session and you can add any kind of media and drop any kind of media at any point of time during your communication is on. When we talk of the interoperability, if we don't talk about the standardization bodies, then it's a little bit a disconnected story. So if you want to, you know, really prove that your interface is, your solution is interoperable, then there should be, you know, the testimony should be provided by some global standardization bodies and 3GPP and all these bodies are standardizing the interfaces and the architecture of the IMS and is really working very, very, you know, in a mission critical fashion to, you know, bring the new vision to the telecommunications. And third generation partnership project is basically meant for standardizing the IMS core. Your OMA is responsible for standardizing your application and FC span is elaborating the benefits of the IMS around the fixed networks. So what is, the, what is there in the scope of the standardization? If you see the scope of the standardization, it's standardizing the services and the IMS core. It's standardizing even your clients also. It's standardizing even your network to network interfaces going towards other network like uh, yesterday somebody said that you want, you know, the secure way of communication with the state, government, and all those kind of, you know, the secure network to network interfaces are available inside the IMS. You have, you know, a further better usage of the radio wherein, you know, you have all the kind of the accesses existing together, but you want to, you know, dynamically use those accesses to the benefit of the network efficiency. You can, you know, do it with the kind of the applications and the facilities you have in the IMS, all standardized. 
an end-to-end -end KPI. That's where I mean to say that is QoS enabled. It does not mean it is not based on the best effort basis. Plus, you have you know the radio optimization techniques also there inside. So this is the scope of the IMS uh, standardization work going on across the globe. This is the layered architecture of the IMS. Basically, this layered architecture is meant for uh, one main prime reason is that to incorporate the efficiency inside the network. That means in terms of bandwidth saving, in terms of you know the quickness of creating the applications, using the applications, and the ease with which you know it can be used by the users, and you know to really conceal or seal all the complexities of the network from the usage perspective. So you have the transport which is meant for handling only and only media. You have the control which is handling only and only signal, and the application which is you know. Uh, handling only and only service logic. So you have totally a federative architecture, so all the components can be reused, can apply at any point of time as per the needs and the... So here what I wanted to show here is that, you know, the IMS is, this is just architecture also, what all the nodes are there inside the IMS. But on the top of that, the main message out of this slide is that IMS is access agnostic. No matter you have the wireline, broadband, narrowband, HSPA, wireless, or means WCDM network, all the networks can be, you know, connected to the common IMS core, meaning that all, it does not happen, you know, through some kind of magic stick. The heterogeneity of the individual access is adapted by, you know, putting intelligence into the edge of that access network, and that's all, you know, all defined inside the IMS. Plus, you have, you know, the secured connections toward the other networks also over the standardized interfaces, and all this, you know, the interfaces used are standardized, mainly SIP diameter, and even the variance of the SIP to control the money. One interface, one uh, access I did not show here is the satellite-based communication. Just for your information that, you know, that is also can be very well integrated with this. And it's, you know, working with, again, the definite quality of services because you have some techniques like signal compression inside the IMS which, which can, you know, optimize the usage of the radio uh, resources. There is a simple use case with IMS that the current uh, technology is, you know, based on a little bit uh, uh, distributed but at the same time uh, highly, you know, inconsistent in terms of features and you have the different set of features across the different offices. What... Uh, a simple use case, if I, if simple, you know, example I can take of the PABX system is the case with any normal enterprises. You have the different PABX systems in the different offices. On the contrary, in, with the IMS, what you can do is that you can, you know, consolidate the entire network by having common centralized IMS system moving to its, you know, applications, functionalities, and uh, scalability of the network. That's the basically one of the few of the many characteristics of the IMS network. Plus, at the same time, as uh, Chairperson rightly said, that it's a one-third age where you know you have all the three phases of the technology coexisting. So you have your you know existing PABX also can be connected to the business trunking or IP trunking kind of facilities. There's a, just to show that IMS is something you know existing and is operational in the live networks to the operator's satisfaction. So okay. So these are the there are many more you know reasons to choose the IMS, but among the top ten you know reasons this I have uh, cited out and to the interest in the interest of time I'll read out few that you know it's a standardized so meaning that it's an interoperable it can be you know connected it's interoperable it can be connected across the different in a multi vendor environment it's a scalable high capacity a few nodes you know can cater to the requirement of your entire network it's uh, secured also very important especially for the command forces when you say secured it does not mean that it's simply you know providing the secure security what you have traditionally inside the IP technology here you know standardized bodies have defined some techniques to secure your network from you know any kind of uh, malicious usage of your network and which is traditionally the case with the IP so that's what you know has been taken care of with the standardization bodies plus you can connect your ports also the huge base of your terminals which is you know lying in your network and can be connected to the uh, IMS networks and uh, on the top of this, very important is that the ease with which you can roll out the services with the IMS is unmatchable. It's, it's, you cannot compare with anything. Like, you know, you can make the set of services within no time without any kind of, you know, hassles. Because it's all standardized. You can select any vendor. You know that it's based on the standardized interfaces. So that's the benefit. And on the top of this, what I wanted to say here is that IMS is something indispensable, first of all. It's, of course, meant for the unified communication. But the, on the top of this, the very important point I want to draw in, in this forum, forum is that IMS is touching the every aspect of the network, be it uh, access, application, everything. On the access also, it's controlling by putting a QoS mechanism against standardized and, you know, uh, field proven. So what I mean to say here is that IMS is not only the future of code. In fact, is you know, 
the way it's shaping the vision of the telecommunication is the future of telecommunication. So with that, I conclude and thank you so much for your kind attention. Jai Hind.